Eduardo, there have been lots of conversations this week about transformative technology and particularly AI and machine learning. What are your views on that and what opportunities that brings? Absolutely. I think a lot of what you know, it's happening today is technology is starting to enable really traditional industries. And in many cases, it's around the, co the concept of data and how data can be analyzed and leveraged to improve in some cases how big businesses and their consumers interact. Uh, in some cases, it could be sort of a reinvention of a new market like e-commerce as well in the front end, chatbots. Uh, and I think artificial intelligence is at the you know, the crux of everything that's transpiring in big data because there's so much data out there. With the level of sensors that we have today as individuals and also across business processes, we're collecting more data than ever before and it's growing exponentially. So the question is how do we take the data, analyze it, distill it, and make it into an actionable format that will make businesses better and will ultimately end, you know, provide a, a good benefit to the world. In the same way that you've described that you couldn't have foreseen where Facebook would have gone when you first conceived of it, do you think we can begin to understand now where we're going to be in 10 years' time? I think innovation is is accelerating very quickly, and you can see that by how long it took, you know, the telephone back in the day to reach 100 million consumers versus how long it took, you know, a social game on the Facebook platform to reach 100 million players, which was less than 30 days. Um, I think going forward, you can always project and and make assessments, but. I think we will learn as we go, and innovation is exponential, I believe, and it will be hard to tell what the end state is. Uh, so we can, we can dream and, and look to the future, but it's, it's hard to predict it in a precise way. Raj, when you are trying to look for those companies, what do you look for and what qualities do you look for and who to invest in particularly? You know, I, I'd say the first thing we look for is entrepreneurs who are really committed, who are passionate. Um, we always say that we back entrepreneurs who are willing to crawl through broken glass. Um, and it really means that they're willing to do whatever it takes to, to build their companies. But beyond that, it's entrepreneurs who build great teams around them who realize that it's the success of the team that drives the overall success of the company. And for us, one of the special things is we look for companies that want to partner and collaborate with some of the biggest companies in the world. Um, it's, a, it's a bit different. We invest in B2B technology companies, but we, um, we truly value companies that are willing to partner with, with others as they grow. How is that as a marriage, Eduardo? Because you're trying to sort of bring together these bright young things and the sort of incumbent institutions. That must be quite hard to, to sort of facilitate. Yeah, meaning at the surface, there are two different universes. And, and typically, the modus operandi has been young kids in a garage or a dorm room are going to out disrupt the largest business in the world. And what we're moving towards, especially as innovation is starting to touch very large traditional industries, that in fact, young kids in a garage can, can put together phenomenal technology that will enable innovation in some of the largest businesses in the world. And their distribution platform, their capital, their regulatory know-how will enable young entrepreneurs' growth and their businesses' growth to accelerate. The idea is, is, is a marriage, but it requires a translation engine. Uh, very different cultures, but with a lot of potential synergy. Uh, and we leverage our partnership with, with a large organization that has tremendous access to the corporate world to, to help bring, bring forward that marriage, Boston Consulting Group. How does it feel for you to be able to do that? Because you were there once, and you know, for you to be those people that people look to to be able to help them in that way, it must be quite a special feeling, quite a nice feeling. Is it sort of semi-philanthropic feel to it? It's, it's always humbling to work with amazing entrepreneurs who are passionate about what they're doing. So in, in some ways, I'm thankful to have the opportunity to work with them. Uh, and I always learn, uh, no matter what you've done in life, you, you, every single day of your life, you wake up in the morning and you're ready to learn some more. And I learn all the time from the entrepreneurs I work with. So it's humbling to always see their passion and, 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 and work with them. Raj, does the, does the passion in these young things take you back to when you started your first company? I think it keeps us all young. Um, and the reality is we have entrepreneurs of all ages. Um, so the energy that comes from being an entrepreneur isn't something that's only for, for folks who are young. I think it's something that comes from following a passion, building something which has the ability to go well beyond the impact you can have on your own. You talk there about learning from other people. You're in an environment here where there are 2,000 delegates have descended on Berlin. It's the most successful super return ever. What have you found? It's your first one. Have you enjoyed yourselves? 
no, it's been a phenomenal experience and very thankful to, to be here. Thank you. Great we've, meetings, lots of them are from what I hear. We've, we've loved being here. It's, it's been a great group and uh, we've, we've been having a lot of fun on our first super return. Thank you so much for joining us. Much appreciated. Great to meet you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you.